everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we are going to play with some dry dry powders onto a worsted weight non superwash yarn. This is Knit Picks Simply Wool in the color Winkle. It is a 100% eco wool worsted weight yarn that is created with a blend of natural wool colors that haven't been bleached. I suppose I don't know for sure that it hasn't been bleached, but the whole Simply Wool line has been created using um, a variety of naturally existing wool colors blended to create the different colors that are in the line. Before we get ready to dye the yarn, I do want to pre-soak it uh, for at least 30 minutes, but potentially more like a couple of hours or even overnight. Some yarn is really absorbent and will soak up water really quickly and others don't do it nearly as fast. And so I try to vary my pre-soak times based on that. And I can see here that, yeah, when sinking it in, there are dry spots. Uh, and that's just, I think it depends on like the amount of lanolin uh, that could be in the wool or maybe some other factors. I'm not entirely sure, but a longer pre-soak can help. Um, however, if you're doing something more speckly, then it doesn't really matter if the yarn is completely saturated, especially if you're hoping for some of the original color to show through. But in overall, I do try to make sure my yarn is well saturated before we start the dyeing process. So what powders do we have here? Uh, I believe that we have some sea spray, a black. Uh, I don't know if we have like, maybe we have a purple. And maybe that's some more tangelo. We'll leave that one for the end. This I think is tangelo. And this looks like that could be more of this. So I have a feeling we might end up with something very tangelo with some pops of purple, green, and black. But let's get the yarn. I have my catering steam pan here on the counter and I am gonna add two tablespoons of vinegar. And now I'm coming over with our yarn and I did not squeeze all of the liquid out of it. Um, I squeezed a little bit more out just now so that way we can Hopefully add that acid to it a bit. Ooh, hmm. We might need to do like a nice little scrunch. Now this is actually pre-soaked for a while and it does look like we may still have some dryish patches. So I don't know. A lot of these dyes also have citric acid mixed in them. I do plan to add more water eventually, but I thought it would be fun to add the dyes to our cold wet yarn and then add more water on in a bit. But now I'm going to go put on my Deluxe Rubber Respirator Mask, Safety Glasses, and Gloves so we can start applying the dye. We're not exactly going for speckles even though we are applying this powder to the yarn and I'm just kind of taking it and spreading it across. I can't really see it right now. So I don't even really know necessarily what color we have. But since this yarn isn't super washed, whatever color we have likely will spread out. And I'm gonna save the rest of that to use once we flip. I'm not even checking what color we have this could be black this time. I'm pretty sure the other one was maybe sea spray, but I'll be honest, it is hard to tell what color we have right now. I suppose there was always a chance that we had multiple blacks. This I think did used to be a purple and there's only a little bit of it. Tapping it out. The goal is to try to use this up. And in fact, I am gonna sort of rinse off my gloves here on the yarn. Okay, I'm definitely seeing a green and the black and a little bit of that purple color. It's very, very subtle though. All right, I think we will go for some of this tangelo because we have a lot of it and it's been used in a few projects so far, but 
I want to bring some warmth to this project. And these colors will likely spread a, a fair amount once we add water. But given that we do have citric acid in here, they could also strike on a little bit of a faster scale. It's hard to say for sure. Okay. What I'm going to do now is flip the yarn over to the other side. And as I'm doing this, you're seeing some of that tangelo show up uh, from my fingertips. And actually, I'm curious if I press. I don't know how far the colors will go into the center, but it's a good thing we have a fair amount of them. And again, when we pour water on, things will likely spread through a bit. But yeah, I'm going to keep adding these dyes on. And so I really, and I'm just not even pinching it when it's hard to grasp, I'm just sort of wiggling it on. I really enjoy mixing powders with citric acid to dye yarn. Uh, but one downside of that is that sometimes you end up with leftovers, which isn't bad except for when you don't label. <laughs> and when you don't label things, then it can become harder to remember exactly what you were working with. All right, I've used up most of the colors so far, except for this last bit of some tangelo. And let's go ahead and give that now, I do still have these containers that we can rinse out, but I think I want to start adding on some hot water. Okay, I'm coming over with almost eight cups of hot tap water and four tablespoons of white vinegar. And I am pouring this onto our yarn. And the reason why we are starting hot uh, is so that way we can maybe allow some of these colors to start striking. Uh, a little bit, but I'm going to move this now over to the stove and start heating it up properly. I still have a salt shaker with some tangelo over there, but these colors are so soft that I'm not really feeling the need for it. Uh, I'm very, very curious as to what the yarn is going to look like once we flip things and move it around a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to let this heat up and I'm going to go ahead and set a timer for 20 minutes and then we'll check back in to see how our colors are striking or if they've moved we'll flip the yarn and then we'll go about maybe adding some of that color that we have left while we are waiting i do want to point out that the pre-soak water from this yarn is a little yellow and dirty that's something i've experienced in the past so if we see some yellow when we're rinsing it or in the dye bath that is not something to worry about. I don't think I need to wait the whole 20 minutes. After 15 minutes, it does appear that all of the color has cleared. And I'm really curious what the flip is going to look like. Uh, ooh, that's cute. I love how soft these colors are. That's really, really, really cute. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is I wanna open it up because I don't know how much color penetration we got towards the center of the yarn. And we actually got a reasonable amount of color. Uh, that, so that is good. There's a lot more color towards the bottom of the skeins where the bottom of the yarn was because we had moved things a little bit. But now I'm gonna come in with some of this remnant color that we now have in liquid form. So this is some of that more green color and it didn't really leave a perceptible difference on the yarn. This was our purple and again I can barely see it. I wonder if the orange is gonna have any more impact. A little bit. Okay I see that a little bit on the yarn. And then we have some black. I am going to dilute this because I'm nervous about bringing this in. Okay, I diluted it by half. Okay, good. Uh, bringing this in 
there is color to it, but not so bad. I'm gonna dilute this last bit. Diluting the dye is allowing me to spread it out further, which means that the color we're adding on is not as concentrated. And so that allows us to keep the soft effect while using up all of our dye. So I'm gonna turn the heat back up a hair, and I'm gonna go ahead and heat this for 30 minutes to make sure everything is well set. And now I am going to, well, I think I may as well flip the yarn just because I'm curious what we've got going on over here. I see a bit more of our black and it's just funny because the base was already pretty gray. But anyway, I am going to let our yarn cool here in the pan because I do want it to be completely cool before we wash it. Let's wash our yarn. Sometimes I get questions about putting hot water onto wool yarn. And while you don't want to change temperature really quickly, I do sometimes dip dye 100% wool yarn like this into a hot dye bag. And the reason why that's not necessarily an issue is because you need heat and agitation in order to cause felting, and so a little bit usually does not cause a problem. However, uh, some yarn that doesn't have as much twist in their plies, then it might get a little bit sticky and stick to each other, even from just pre-soaking. So it's important to pay attention to the yarn you're using, and then you'll kind of get a feel of what you can do with it without causing felting. But anyway, let's see how we're doing here. And I suppose another place you want to be careful is in the washing. Uh, when I go and I squeeze, I'm very careful to not try to rub or agitate. I try to gently squeeze it out. And I'm seeing a little bit of gray in the rinse, but it's not feeling quite like bleeding to me. But let's fill this up again. Let's see how things are going. Yeah, this is looking fine. I'm gonna go ahead and put the yarn through my spin dryer and hang it up to dry so we can take a look at the finished yarn. The color that we added is super subtle, but I love it. It feels very, very fall. Also like a, almost a little vintage. Oof, I love dyeing bases that aren't white to begin with. Of course, you could achieve a similar effect by dyeing the yarn gray first. Uh, but anyway, let's go see what it looks like dry. Here is the finished dry yarn. And the effects are so soft, I really, really like it. I feel like I'm finally taking advantage of some of the benefits of using dye powders mixed with citric acid on non-superwash yarn because I've seen how the colors spread and give that softness. And to use up some of those leftover dyes we had, we really took advantage of this today. We do have some of the original gray from our Simply Wool yarn left over, and that complements the softness of the colors really well. We could have done this on some just bare yarn that was um, off-white color as well, and in, if you wanted to have something that felt this soft, I would just start over dyeing it with a low depth of shade of gray before doing the rest of the layering of color. Colorways like this are the reason why I can't leave dye behind. When there's a little bit of powder left over, I want, if I can't use it on the project that I'm working on, I want to save it to create something else. And so I find that sometimes trying to find ways to use the leftovers that I have results in a lot of fun creativity and also potentially blending colors together. Maybe I wouldn't have gone and just picked. I don't know if I would have or originally planned to do sea spray and tangelo with black, but the results here are beautiful, and so maybe that's something I would reach for again. Today's project is one that is more reproducible than we always end up with. Because I know the colors that I had on hand, I'm pretty confident that they were Tangelo, Sea Spray, Deep Purple, and True Black. It could have been Toner Black, but a black. Uh, therefore, I could attempt to do something like this again. And I like the idea of layering powder onto yarn and then adding water after that. 
This is something I've done before with the yarn completely dry, but doing it with the yarn wet was a very interesting way to do that as well. This particular yarn doesn't soak up water that quickly, so if I had added the powder on dry and then added on water, I'm not sure if the colors would have been as soft, but that's something that I need to explore and play with anyway. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, turn on notifications so you don't miss any new videos. And if you love the yarn I dye, go and check out the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. If you'd like the opportunity to play around with multiple Chemnitz colorways to see how they work up, to get a feel and swatch and finally answer the question, how does this knit up? Go and check out the Chemnitz Hanukkah samplers where you can have eight nights of packages to unwrap with eight different techniques and colorways all dyed by me. You can find more information in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. I will have links to the Hanukkah sampler pre-order and more all down in the video description. Thank you so much for watching.